You want answers? I'm as mad as hell, and I'm not going to take this anymore. You want answers? You have offended my family. I think I'm entitled. You want answers? I want the truth. And you have offended a Shaolin Temple. You can't handle the truth. Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. Welcome back, Tokers and Toquettes. Uh, it is 47 after the hour, and we've got to talk. You know, for uh, a while now, I've been bringing up the point of the Box Canyon metaphor. This is something I did a presentation on at uh, the Normal National Conference, and you can find my presentation online in our Stick'em video archive, stick'em.com slash normal show live. Look for the Box Canyon presentation. And the whole gist of the Box Canyon presentation is, if we keep fighting for medical marijuana, medical is exactly what we're going to get. Now think about your typical medicines that you have to get a prescription for, the doctor has to sign everything, you have to go to a pharmacy, there's limited amounts of what you can get, it's got a jacked up price. Well, that's what we're facing, that's what we're looking at. What folks need to understand is that the first 13, 14 states now that have legalized the medicinal use of marijuana, nine of them did through so the through the initiative process the other five have done through the legislative process and each time a state has used its legislature to get medical marijuana passed we've seen further and further restrictions of patients rights and no state exemplifies this any better than the no garden state new jersey now new jersey already had the most restrictive medical marijuana law on the books when it was passed right like it doesn't allow patients to grow their own medicine you pretty much have to be on your deathbed before you can get medical marijuana and so forth but now the republican governor chris christie who hates medical marijuana and never wanted to see it passed is now going forth with his administration promulgating rules 97 pages of rules and regulations for the medical marijuana program that are so restrictive that are so onerous that are such high hoops to jump through that hardly anyone in the state of new jersey is going to be able to qualify for medical marijuana and one thing we've learned in politics is that these sort of things don't get more and more expansive. They get more and more restrictive. We've seen it in the five states so far that have passed these medical marijuana laws, and we have more states like Pennsylvania and New York and Ohio and Illinois that are looking at medical marijuana bills, and they're getting more and more restrictive too. They oftentimes start with a big plate of nice uh, rights and, and uh, responsibilities that are listed, but then they get chipped away by law enforcement, chipped away by the people in politics who don't like medical marijuana or think it's some sort of ruse. So I'm reporting this from uh, NBC New York. Uh, Senator Scutari, the senator who uh, sponsored the medical marijuana legislation in the first place, Senator Scutari is taking particular exception to how rules deal with the six combination manufacturing and distribution alternative treatment centers, aka dispensaries, that the law calls for, two in North New Jersey, two in Central Jersey, two in South Jersey. Instead, Scutari said he was told two of the centers will be just for growing the marijuana while the sale will be at the other four. So not the six dispensaries that, you know, when people say, oh, we're going to vote for six alternative treatment centers, there'll be six places for patients to get their medicine, two in the north, two in the central, two in the south. No, it's not going to be six dispensaries. It's going to be four dispensaries, and there's going to be two grow sites is what there's going to be. Scutari is also worried about proposed restrictions on potency and ingestibility, noting, quote, we wrote the most stringent conservative law in the country. I hope these rules are not so stringent now that they strangle it. That's my fear right now, end quote. Well, Sundu Scutari, they are strangling the New Jersey medical marijuana program before it even has a chance to serve its first patients. Let me give you a highlight because I read all 97 pages of this law last night and uh, had to take some roll aids afterwards. First of all, your qualifying conditions for medical marijuana in New Jersey, ALS, that's Lou Gehrig's disease, multiple sclerosis, terminal cancer, muscular dystrophy, or inflammatory bowel disease like Crohn's disease, any terminal illness where you have less than 12 months to live, or positive status for AIDS, HIV, or cancer. The terminal illness one is most uh, interesting in that this law got signed months ago and it's meant for people with less than 12 months to live, but because of this stall tactics by Governor Christie, it won't go into effect until July 2011. Yeah, so much for those people that had less than 12 months to live. I guess they don't get to get their medical marijuana. Uh, you also qualify for seizure disorders like epilepsy, intract intractable skeletal muscular spasticity, or glaucoma, but only if other treatments don't work. 
If you've got glaucoma, you've got to try every other pharmaceutical possible treatment. If you've got epilepsy, if you've got uh, spasticity, you've got to try every other treatment first. All those pharmaceuticals with their nasty side effects, you've got to try all those first. And then, if it doesn't work, then you can have medical marijuana. The registration fee for the patients, $200. Now, it is a two-year registration, to be sure. But coming up with $200 right there, cash on the barrel hold, is going to be very tough for a lot of patients. They do have a, a program where if you can prove indigency, you can get it for $20. But we know how those programs work. The, the poorest of the poor get the $20. But those who are the working class poor that have just enough money to not be poor, but too little money to afford $200, they're the ones that have to pay the two, $200. Here's a really, really bad uh, part of this bill, or of these regulations. The doctor who certifies you for medical marijuana must have seen you for a year and documented four visits for your debilitating condition and has to see you for follow-up visits, right? Because, you know, poor folks, we can afford to go to the doctor four times a year, right? Exactly. That's what you're thinking. And by the way, not just any doctor can recommend. The doctors who recommend actually have to register with the state for the right to be able to recommend after they see you four times within a year. You can only have a maximum of two ounces in any 30-day period. When you go to the uh, alternative treatment center, you can only buy two ounces and they're going to keep track electronically to find out, you know, whether you're getting more. Oh, and you can only shop at the one alternative treatment center that you specify. You can't go to the other ones if you're on the road, you know, if you have any vacationing in South Jersey and you live in North Jersey. Sorry, you got to make sure you, ca you packed enough medicine from your dispensary in North Jersey. You cannot share or give away your medical marijuana even to another patient. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Caregivers can only take care of one patient and cannot have any possession convictions in their past as determined by mandatory criminal background checks and fingerprinting. So if you want to take care of your wife who's wasting away from cancer, you, sir, need to go and get your fingerprints, criminal background check taken care of to make sure that you weren't holding, caught holding the joint back in college 20 years ago. And if you were, sorry, you can't take care of her. Uh, we already talked about only four dispensaries in the state. Uh, when you get your medical marijuana card, it'll have your name on it, your photo on it, and your home address on it. Let's hope you don't lose your wallet and it gets picked up by some home invader. If you want to be one of these uh, six alternative treatment centers, you know, two that are growers, four that are dispensaries, if you want to get involved in that, that'll cost you $20,000 in an application fee, and 2000 of that is non-refundable. That's right. If they reject your application, they're keeping the two grand. No eating or drinking at a dispensary. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> Can I get you a glass of water? Poor AIDS sufferer who's uh, got a massive case of dry mouth and uh, could really... Nope, sorry. Can't get you nothing. No eating or drinking at the dispensary. The employees who work at the dispensary will have to be drug tested and won't be able to work at the dispensary if they test positive for cannabis. That makes a whole lot of sense. Let's get people working at a dispensary who don't know a thing about marijuana. That's a, that's a bright idea. Oh, here's one I'm sure you'll love. Marijuana available at the dispensary shall have a THC level not to exceed 10%. That's right. None of the medical marijuana in New Jersey is going to be allowed to be above 10% THC. Now, for comparison's sake, in the Netherlands, where they have a medical marijuana program, if it's not above 10% THC, they don't consider it medical. <laughs> oh, here's one the growers, I'm sure, will appreciate. A dispensary, you know, the two that can be the grow sites for the entire state of New Jersey, a dispensary shall cultivate no more than three strains of medical marijuana. Because really, I mean, my gosh, the entire state of New Jersey, it's, you know, 9, 10, 12 million people, however many there are. I'm sure three strains will be just fine. They only need really three, right? Oh, my God. Dispensaries will have to keep a logbook of their patients self-reported pain every three months. That's right. Your dispensary, not your doctor, is going to be required to ask you to point on the pain scale, 1 to 10, how bad is your owie? And keep a log of that for three months, or no, keep a log of that every three months so that we can determine whether or not any people are abusing it, you know, just to get high. Here's a lovely one that anybody who runs a business and has to keep track of inventory will appreciate. Dispensaries can only keep on hand two ounces per patient that's registered for that dispensary and must destroy any excess. Right? So if I'm a dispensary and I got 50 patients signed up for me, I can have 100 ounces on site. Any more than that has to be destroyed day each day after day.
Dispensaries now, if if these uh, these treatment centers are going to be uh, have the right to deliver marijuana as well, they can deliver it to patients who are who can't get out of bed, you know, who are homebound. But if they're going to deliver, they must keep one million dollars worth of insurance on any delivery vehicles. I'm sure that costs a pretty penny. A dispensary delivery cannot be made on the same day that the patient orders the medicine. Yeah, you are in intractable pain, bedridden, can't get out. You've got a recommendation for medical marijuana. You make the call. You got to sleep on it. You got to wait another 24 hours before someone can bring you your medicine. Dispensaries must tell patients not to engage in extraneous conversations with the delivery personnel. <laughs> what? <laughs> you can't chat up the guy who's bringing your weed? <laughs> Come on now. The dispensaries, if they advertise must only advertise with black text on a white background. No illuminated signs, no t-shirts, no promotional items like pens or anything like that. Okay. And the uh, final bit here that they've uh, got in these regulations for the state of New Jersey, it should go into effect, I think, today or tomorrow. Patients cannot give their, excuse me, patients cannot get their medical marijuana delivered if they live within a drug-free school zone which is a thousand feet away from a school, or as most of us call it, anywhere in a city. Do you folks realize that New Jersey is the most densely populated United State? That it has something like 900 people per square mile? That it's almost all urban? It's almost all within a thousand feet of a school? So if you happen to have intractable skeletal pain and uh, can't get out of bed, just make sure you don't live within a thousand feet of a school in the state of New Jersey. This is the direction medical marijuana is headed, people. If we keep fighting for medical, this is what we're going to get. Because other states are going to see this and they're going to copy it. And they're going to realize that they can shut down medical marijuana before it even has a chance to get started by instituting rules so onerous that nobody can really apply to the program. Nobody can really qualify. This is what we're going to get. There are only 26 states in the United States that have the initiative system. Nine of them have already used their initiative system to get medical marijuana. Two more are using their initiative system to get medical marijuana this election cycle. But after that, those other 24 states back east and down south, it's all up to the legislatures. And if this is allowed to stand in New Jersey, this is what those legislatures are going to start copying. Wake up, people. It's time to abandon the Box Canyon strategy and work for full legalization for all people. Vote yes on Prop 19. I'm Radical Russ. Thanks for joining us. The Cannabis Carry and everyone here at the Normal Foundation. We're out of here. And until next time, take care of each other, tokers. This is Normal Show Live, the voice of the marijuana nation. You take a seed, you plant it, you grow it, you dry it, you roll it, you smoke it. You take a seed, you plant it, you grow it, you dry it, you roll it.